I remember the first time I saw a Reviclia play. It was under White Cat's score on Don Don with EZDT, where Reviclia was talked about as so good that anyone getting even close to him was seen as extremely suspicious. This is already striking, since the god of a category is quite a high bar. But that was before I'd even seen his plays. Because when I did, it became an entirely different level of awe and respect for one of the most unorthodox players the game has ever seen. So who is Reviclia, and what makes him so exceptional? This is that story. The story of Reviclia. But first, a word from the sponsor of this video. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where you can join to learn just about anything. Like whether it's something you already care about or something new you'd like to try, there's probably a Skillshare class for you. For example, funnily enough, before I actually started working with them, I had already taken a class on making music, but I had a problem in that all my songs were mixed terribly. And so, over the last few weeks I've been taking Learn How to Mix Music with Young Guru. And the sort of wild thing was that despite the short length of the class, it basically transformed how everything I made sounded. Skillshare is also curated for learning, meaning that there are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused wherever your creativity takes you. It's also only $10 a month, which makes it pretty much a steal. On top of this, the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. That's it. Now, on to the video. There isn't much specific information regarding Reviclia's early life as a player, but in December 2014, only five months after starting the game, he began playing Easy, which would give him a pretty early introduction to the mod. And then, after spending a couple months with it, he would become fairly skilled. And especially his plays on Tag 4 maps in this time stand out as being really impressive. Once he got to this level of comfort, he would end up trying something which would define his entire playstyle. And that was that he decided to put on DT in January of 2016. Which is why, after only a couple of months of playing, he'd already found a skill set of his own. With Easy DT, Tag 4, and Low AR Hidden being his strongest skill sets. Obviously, this is out of the ordinary, especially for a player with as low a rank as he had. But that was really just the tip of the iceberg since his playstyle is an entirely different story. This is because, while most players begin their time with the game on mouse using the mouse buttons, they move away pretty quickly after realizing how far superior keyboard is. The thing about Reviclia is he never did. He also used the default skin and had no background dim, as you can see from this screenshot from the time. This made him stand out a lot, even as a 5 digit, since very few players can even make it that far with this kind of a playstyle. At the time, this would be the most unique thing about him, but it wouldn't stay that way for long. This is because he'd see a fairly rapid growth in reading skill and technical skill, with his easy DT skill in particular quickly ballooning to become really impressive. This wasn't his only skill by any extent of the imagination though, since he also had scores like a Serupidin Hidden SS, which is just stupid with the default skin and mouse buttons. This also made his accuracy, which was the only SS on the map, even more impressive. Shortly after this, he would also make a live play, which would get a pretty unprecedented amount of attention, probably because of just how crazy his playstyle was. He would also get this score, which really just showed off how good he was at Tag 4 as well. The thing is that despite being extremely good at Tag 4 and Hidden, where he was truly in a league of his own was in high BPM Easy and Easy Hidden. Well, I say a league of his own, but there was one other player who could compete with him, and it was GN. I think this leaderboard shows this pretty well. This is the current leaderboard for the map, which really shows just how far ahead these two players were. But Reviclia still excelled at this in a pretty singular way. A good score to represent this was his top play at the time, which is a Matt's core, easy hidden, one miss, less than 100 combo away from the end of the map. To put in perspective just how impressive this was, across all the other easy leaderboards at the time, there was only one player who'd even gotten close to this combo, and it was Milhoire F with an easy only 700 combo S rank. This is a really, really impressive score in itself, but with Hidden, Revikli had still managed to out combo it. His score is still the second highest easy combo to this day, and it's still by far the highest hidden combo, because his skills really were that exceptional. On the topic of his hidden plays, he'd also get a Utage play with this clip at the beginning.
He would also be gaining a reputation for his passing skills, which were also incredible in every way. Like, obviously he excelled the expected but still extremely impressive reading and memory based maps, like Atomino no Taiso, Hidden Flashlight, or High Score Easy DT, which looks like this. But apart from these, he was also really good at just every kind of passing. There is a good reason for this though, and that was the last part of his playstyle that I've yet to touch on. His DPI. This is not usually a point of huge importance unless you're at an extreme on either side. Which, let's just say, Riviclia definitely was. He played a 1700 DPI, which was more than double most. Which is almost certainly a factor in both what and how he played. I say this because passing massive jumps and easy are both things which high DPI lends itself to in a big way. His skill set, along with his passing ability, gave him the ability to pass things like da 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 AR9, which has only been passed twice since. And on top of this, he would also pass the top difficulty of Galaxy Collapse. This is technically a map that has gone unpassed since, but at this time the HP was significantly lower, meaning that while being really impressive, it isn't quite the game breaking score that it'd be today. The thing is that because of how absurd his passes were, there were a fair few people who wondered how he could possibly be legit. But because he already had strong ties with many other top players at the time, and he also had a multitude of live plays, the idea never got very widespread, and would end up almost completely dying out before anything could really get started. As 2016 went on, he would continue increasing in technical as well as reading skill, which as he was already quite good at jumps, and especially high BPM jumps, actually set him up for the easy PP record. Especially since he had plays like Can You Understand Me, Easy DT, that were worth nearly 350 PP, which was getting very close to the record. This seemed to also give him the idea to go a bit further with it, and there was one big milestone that seemed in reach. The first Easy 400. This was an achievement that GN had gotten within 10 PP of, which meant that it was still sort of a toss up of who would get it. Until, after a few hundred tries, Riviclia was actually able to pull it off becoming the first ever player with an easy 400 PP, with an Achima Seishun easy DT oneness. Only a few days after this, GN would actually get a score that is now technically the first easy 500, but funnily enough, it wasn't even worth 400 at the time. This meant that when Riviclia got an easy DT FC on Kira Kira days, he actually retook the PP record from himself. As the end of 2016 came closer, he would pass Galaxy Collapse with Hidden, and then pass the Big Black, Airman, High Score, and Rainbow Dash Likes Girls with Easy DT. He would then FC Achima Seishun with Easy DT, fixing his choke. He would also FC Mad Machine, which is mashed, but it's also 270 BPM mouse only. All of these scores would make 2016 end up being the year that he'd really get his reputation as the king of Easy DT, which is why as 2017 came, there was a lot of attention focused on him, and he certainly delivered. Since I've already talked about how good of a player he is at length, I'm just going to tell you some of the plays that he got that year. You got a V-cubed hidden FC, which was the first on the map. An endless starlight easy DTFC. A can-do Kokoro diff DTFC. 10 Gaku easy DT. Like, why? He would also get a full moon night pass, which was so crazy that people thought he was hacking. Then a Hime Hime Easy DTFC. Then a Boogie Easy Hidden Double Time Pass. Then Uda Easy DT. Then Scarlet Rose Easy DT with only 10 misses. And then an easy DT near FC on the top diff of eyes half closed. These were all borderline game breaking scores and they would all happen in just a single year, truly cementing his place as a legend. This is why, when going to 2018, all eyes were on what he'd do. Which is why what would happen that year would be so tragic. This is because there was another strong force pulling him away from Osu. 
And it was. I generally don't talk about what players do outside of Osu, but in this case, it's so significant, it's sort of hard to ignore. This is because he isn't just good at Tetris, but instead he's world class. Like on one of the most popular online Tetris clients, J Estris, he's number 8 for 40 line clears, number 7 in 20 line clears, and number 5 in 100 line clears. He was also the ninth person to ever achieve a sub 20 second 40 line time. I guess, for comparison, Ekoro, another famous reading player turned Tetris god, who's become pretty well known for just how good he is, was only able to beat Reviclia 15 to 14 in Poyo Poyo Tetris, which he plays much more than Reviclia. So yeah, he's pretty good. He'd already been playing at a high level since late 2017, but during 2018 he would reach this extremely high level. This success is probably what caused him to have a lot more motivation for Tetris than Osu, since by this time he'd already achieved such a huge amount in the latter game. He does still come back every once in a while though, with some notable scores from these brief returns being a Warrior's Easy DT pass and a Chipscape Easy Hidden Halftime, which was actually done in Attorney only 3 months ago. But sadly, he hasn't logged on since. All in all, Reviclia is a legend, who is not only a testament to how little playstyle and setup matter, but someone who goes so far beyond that. If you look at his scores now, nearly every single one of them has gone unbeaten, even after three years of little activity. This is what's so incredible about him. Someone who dominated and revolutionized the type of play. Someone who's not defined by his playstyle, but instead was so skillful that it faded into the background. And someone who almost certainly go down as one of the greatest players to ever touch the game. This is why, after so long, he's still remembered as one of the most pivotal players to ever pick up Osu. A legend who will not be forgotten anytime soon. And I think that's pretty amazing.